Okay, uh, my name is uh, Uffe Elbeck and uh, for a long time I've been uh, kind of a social entrepreneur here in Denmark. Uh, that's where my professional career has uh, been uh, happening. And uh, back in the 80s, I, I founded a, a cultural grassroots organization called uh, The Front Runners uh, in the second city of, uh, in, of Denmark called uh, Aarhus. And uh, from all the experience from uh, the Front Runners uh, uh, environment, we created uh, the uh, program called the Chaos Pilot uh, program. Uh, and uh, it's a bachelor uh, program, so the students are around uh, 23, 24 years old when they enter the program. It's a very special three year long program uh, with a focus on the social innovation and new business uh, design and uh, try to figure out how can we create other jobs or institutions or companies who fit to the need uh, of the future and um, and I was a principal for for 15 years from uh, uh, 1991 up to 2006 so for 15 years I was uh, a core uh, person in at the uh, at the cash pilot program in school and uh, after uh, when I stepped down I was uh, asked if I could be the CEO of a big international event here in Copenhagen where I'm living today called the World Out Games and uh, I was the CEO from uh, from uh, 2007 until 2009 where the event took place and after that uh, I had a short period uh, where I was living and working in uh, in Toronto in Canada and worked with some good people over there and now I'm back in in in, Den in Denmark and Copenhagen and I'm sitting just in this second uh, waiting for the prime minister to call for the national election where I'm running for a seat in the parliament for the social liberal party here in, in Denmark when when I'm talking about social entrepreneurship uh, and, and I know there's a different kind of uh, defi definition and uh, actually normally I don't do mention that word but uh, I was just asked to use that word uh, for me, uh, uh, what I'm focusing on uh, when it comes to inventing new stuff and new organization and new strategies for the society, I'm using another phrase. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm speaking of something called, we called at the cash pile, we call it the fourth sector companies, which is uh, new uh, business models, new institutional models who exist or will, uh, are, are moving around in the area between the three old sectors, the private sector, the public sector and the NGO sector. In the middle of that, in the co convergent area between these three sectors, you see new companies uh, uh, popping up. And uh, there are two reasons for why this, what we call the fourth sector, is growing. One reason is the meta level, that uh, the problems uh, the planet is facing today is so complex that no, not one single sector can solve the problem. So neither the market can solve the problem, neither the public sector can solve the problem, neither the NGO. So we have to make new combination of the best from these three sectors. And out of that are growing a new sector, which I'm calling the fourth sector. Uh, so that's the meta reason. Uh, the more personal reason is why uh, a lot of people are attracted to that sector is that in our part of the world, that, that of course that can be different depending on where you're living. But if you're living in, in Scandinavia, a lot of people are much more motivated by meaning that uh, the, the salary of the fees. So uh, a lot of people are meaning driven uh, and uh, all these uh, companies or institutions coming up in the fourth sector are meaning driven because they not only are they working and have an economic efficient system, but uh, if there will be a, pro a, pro a profit, it will go back to the community or to the common good. And uh, so for me, that's a really interesting uh, area in the society to focusing on if you want to make a difference. That, that is the fourth sector. <laughs> if you look into what kind of companies or institutions coming up uh, in this area, uh, and I should just mention a few, and because there's a lot coming up at the moment in Denmark, uh, and some of them are very old and have been there for many, many uh, years, uh, decades even. Others are totally fresh. But just take uh, one example from the culture sector. Uh, we have one of the biggest uh, rock uh, festivals in, in Northern Europe, here in Denmark, called the Roskilde uh, Festival. 
Uh, to the, in between the festivals, which is always always happening, the last uh, I think the last w uh, week of uh, June, in between uh, one year to the second year, uh, the, the Roskilde Festival have a full time employed small secretary uh, running, and they are working on high professional uh, level. It's they are so focused on the, they are really a entertainment business on uh, performing on high level, but. When the festival is actually running, they have can only do they can only perform the festival uh, with the help of I think around thirty thousand volunteers, and if there are a profit after investment and payment etc., uh, the profit goes back to use work in the region. So that's an example where they mix all the three, best from three the three old sectors. From the market, uh, the private sector, they, they really know how to run a, a solid, profitable festival. Uh, if there's a profit, it goes back to the community, and they can only uh, uh, actually uh, uh, so uh, actually uh, perform and give the product to the audience with the help of, uh, of volunteers. So that's a good example of a four-sector company. If you look into the social field in Denmark, you have something called the Kofu School System, which is also a fourth sector example. If you look into education, you have, for example, the CARES pilot program, which I was the founder and the principal for 15 years. I've just heard an example right now, something called the Democratic School, which is also, in my opinion, a fourth sector. Uh, if you look into finance banking, we have a bank here in Denmark called Mercur Bank, uh, which is also uh, a four sector bank. Mm -hmm. If you look into media, you have uh, uh, media companies who are running on the same uh, issues, etc. 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 So you can, in all different kinds of branches, you have examples of a new four sector company. In today's society and in tomorrow's society, uh, you, you have to have different kinds of skills to be able to navigate through the change we are uh, seeing right now. Uh, and uh, my answer or my description will be a bit complex, but uh, that's, that's just the reality. First of all, I think that uh, you have to make a difference between qualifications and competence. Uh, I think uh, you need really high skill qualification. So you have to really know, if you are a nurse, you have really to know about medicine and how the body works, etc. etc. If you are a lawyer, you should for sure know something about law and the legal structures and the legal uh, uh, demands, etc. If you, if you are an actor, you really need to have high skilled uh, acting uh, qualifications. So everyone has to stand on solid uh, professional qualifications. But when that is said, you also need different kind of competence. And uh, at the Chaos Pilots, uh, we have uh, four core competence, uh, which we think is very important to be able to perform and to, to uh, have developed in yourself. Uh, one is meaning competence. So how, how can you create meaning through what you're doing? Uh, again, if you can't understand the purpose of what you're doing, your motivation will fall. So, so meaning competence is very, very important. Also, if you want to take leadership, you have to describe for people why is this what we're doing important for somebody for the society etc etc so the way to describe meaning to formulate meaning to create meaning around yourself and what you're doing is very very important so that is meaning competence then you have relationship competence how can you create uh, a good relationships with the people you're working together with how can you really create what we would say really high performance solid uh, team works because uh, in today's society most productions and uh, processes will be in teams uh, so how, how do you work together with other competence how do you work together with other people which also means that you have to uh, really be able to to work uh, on a quite sophisticated level when it comes to communication and conflict solving because there's a lot of conflicts you have to deal with and you really have to be able to to, to have some, uh, you have to create a language around it, you have to create skills around it. So that's relationship uh, competence. The third competence is uh, change competence, which means that you have to be able to unlearn what you already know because you have to create an empty space where new knowledge are able to step in. 
uh, and you have to adapt with uh, a society who changes rapidly around you. You have to, to not be stuck in old mindsets. You have to be open for new uh, solutions, etc., etc. So let's change competence. The last competence is action competence. You have to be able to uh, produce solid, visible results. Uh, otherwise, it won't work. Uh, and the, f the interesting uh, uh, stuff about this uh, uh, this question is that normally you get hired by your professional qualifications, but you get fired by lack of the four competence. Because if you can't uh, outspeak meaning, if you can't be a good colleague and create relationships, if you can't change with uh, that the society are changing rapidly, and if you can't uh, produce solid results, then it won't work. So you get hired by your professional qualification, fired by the lack of competence.